this is a very rough recording for us. We are just trying to capture in on the incredible achievement by India. And Praveen, why don't you take it from here? Uh, it's a really big achievement as we have landed far side of the moon near South Pole. Before us, uh, China has landed to far side, but it was not near South Pole. Now we have landed to South Pole. And it is a very big deal because it's not like the side we see of the moon, it is smoother compared to the far side. The communication to the far side, it is not uh, very well because the radio signal are lost due to the mountains and solid rocks and everything. Praveen, firstly, I want to know, I want to know why we are listening to you and why not someone else. So let's have a little bit of your background, a little bit of where you come from and a little bit of why you have so much knowledge about the moon landing and about gravity. I recently completed my PhD from Physical Research Laboratory Department of Space Unit in Ahmedabad. So we are connected to all the things are going in ISRO and it is communicated to us directly and there is what the things are going on, what are the next projects. These things are very interesting. So there are always conferences. So the ISRO director comes and everyone is going species there. So we get knowledge about that and we start reading. We get the information early compared to other people's. Like at the time, the Chandrayaan 1 found the water on the moon. We reported that it was confirmed in 2009 and there is a one more paper in 2019. So it is more evident paper, like you can't reject that paper directly. In Chandrayaan 1, there were two M3. So it was like, what are the minerals are there? What is the composition of those minerals? There were two things. So two measurements were going on simultaneously. So both confirm the uh, ice board. So it's really very, very big deal. I think the way the moon is tilted on its axis, there is also a part of the south side of the moon which is completely unexposed to light. Light never gets there. So there's also a major temperature difference. I think the way the terrain is and all that is, is massively different because yesterday when we were watching the landing, we saw that the lander had the autonomous lander that was installed on Chandrayaan-3, the Vikram lander had this autonomous lander system which was able to analyze the terrain when it was landing and adjust accordingly to make sure that it doesn't topple over. It had that kind of intelligence already built in. I think that's a massive thing because the whole terrain that we are used to seeing of the moon and the quote-unquote the dark side of the moon is massively different. It is not actually dark. We call it dark because we can't see that side. So it is synchronized with Earth as it rotates around the Earth and its orbital period and its rotation are equal. So when the moon is rotating around the earth, it's the same direction always to us. So the other side is far and we can't see. So we call that side dark. Both sides, the day and nights are equal, equivalent to about 14 days. But surface is very, very rough, as you have said. The other thing, there is uh, no atmosphere like here. And the gravity is very small, six times smaller than on the earth so that propulsion uh, has to be very precise according to that and need to be tested in that type of gravity in earth like some meteoroids come it uh, gets uh, heat up and it starts burning but uh, there is no atmosphere so that means uh, uh, there is no repulsion from the atmosphere so we have to give extra force compared to the uh, earth. What happens is that there is no atmosphere. So the heat sun is not going to trap any environment. So when the sun is going to rise, the temperature will rise very much. When the sun is not going to rise, it will rise very much. Like minus 173 degrees. So the temperature difference is very much. For any thing to stabilize compared to earth, we need to do extra things on earth. There is an atmosphere. Temperature is kind of stable, but uh, the temperature there is not stable. When meteorites come, it start burning due to the resistance from the uh, atmosphere. But there is no atmosphere. If anything is falling there, it will not be balanced force. It will be stable for it. So, we have to extra fuel burn karna padega, usko stable for it because action reaction thing. Last time Chandrayaan 2, it was measuring the distance as it was going down. But this time, it was a little bit of extra usme velocity kind of things had to be done. What kind of velocity of velocity is to measure the velocity of velocity. 
क्या डिस्टेंस से उसका वेलोसिटी कितना होगा तो एक ऑन टाइम मेजरमेंट चल रहा था इट वॉज कम्प्लीटली मैनुअल ऑन द लैंडर विक्रम लैंडर तो फैक्ट दैट द मून ग्रेविटी इज ओनली सिक्सटीन पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ दैट ऑफ द अर्थ सो दर ऑलवेज अ थिंग दैट यू नो थिंग्स डू अ फेलिंग बिकॉज ऑफ ओवर परफॉर्मेंस देर वॉज टू मच एनर्जी बींग एक्सर्टेड बाय द थ्रस्टर्स वेन द लैंडर्स व लैंडिंग इन द पास्ट एंड दैट्स द बेसिक चैलेंज विथ द होल थिंग ऑफ लैंडिंग ऑन द मून so this time whatever the calibration that was done in terms of the way the speed was being reduced which was shown very clearly in the live stream that was going on yesterday was that the the speed was very clearly being calculated and there were phases where the the lander had to hover and that's when the landing happened after a lot of speed changes and things like that yeah exactly that's the thing so the gravity is, is six times smaller there it is about 1.6 or 1.8 एंड ईयर इट इज 9.8 जब ग्रेविटी ज्यादा होगी तो हमें फोर्स भी ज्यादा लगाना पड़ेगा चीज को किसी भी चीज को स्टेबल करने के लिए बट वहां पर ग्रेविटी कम है तो हमें कम फोर्स पे काम करना पड़ेगा उसके लिए हमें चीजें भी डिफरेंट तरीके से टेस्ट करनी पड़ेंगी तो हमें विक्रम लैंडर को अलग तरीके से टेस्ट करना पड़ा सिंपल एटमोसफेयर में हम टेस्ट नहीं कर सकते तो उसके लिए अलग अलग टेक्निक्स वगैरह यूज की गई है Why is it so difficult to get to the moon? Like, what is the challenge here? You just have to escape Earth's gravity, and you have to get to the moon. It's like very straightforward, isn't it? So why isn't it as straightforward as I make it sound? And we got there in 1969. So we had people on the moon in 1969. So why, from 1969 to today, we're in 2023? It's been 54 years, and there has only been a very few successful moon missions, at least. it's very interesting question and it's a very challenging let's say if one thing happens at one time it doesn't mean that it can be successful at second time earth is rotating in its axis and in its orbit and moon also is rotating so let's say moon is here and we want to send things like satellite there so it is moving so we have to calculate all the things at which time at which distance it will be In our case, like in Chandrayaan three, we have used a sling suit, so we have to give lots of rotation ar- around the Earth, then use the sling suit, and then uh, there will be rotation around the Moon, and slowly, slowly the orbit will be smaller and smaller. It uh, went around hundred kilometer, then the Vikram lander landed, and then I think seven or eight. PM the Pragyal rover start rovering on the Moon's surface. What do you mean by slingshot? जब कोई रस्सी है तो रस्सी के एक साइड में हम पत्थर बांध देते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल एंड उसको रोटेट करेंगे हम तो एक पॉइंट पे हम उसको छोड़ेंगे तो उस पर ज्यादा फोर्स होगा क्यों टोर्क का नाम सुना होगा टोर्क इज इक्वल टू द डिस्टेंस इन टू फोर्स सो हम अगर किसी चीज को पत्थर को इस तरीके से फेंकेंगे तो हम उस पर एक फोर्स दे रहे हैं पर अगर हम उसको डिस्टेंस से घुमा के फेंकेंगे तो डेट विल बी आर टाइम्स फोर्स so if we increase the distance force will increase the torque will increase when you use the rod like let's say there is uh, a big stone and you want to move that stone if it is very very heavy you can't move that stone by hand jab tum agar kisi badi si rod ko tum use karoge and iske niche yahan par kuch chhota sa stone rakh ke tum rod use karoge and yahan par course lagaoge second position pe टोटल फोर्स जो इस सेकंड स्टोन पे लगेगा वो होगा टोटल डिस्टेंस इनटू दैट फोर्स वी यूज सो दिस डिस्टेंस प्लेज ए ह्यूज रोल देयर लाइक अ सीसो या लाइक सीसो एग्जैक्टली सो इन द सीसो इफ आई हैव अ वेरी हेवी चाइल्ड लेट्स से आई एम सिटिंग ऑन वन साइड एंड विश्रुत इज ट्राइंग टू पुश मी अप फ्रॉम द अदर साइड द लॉन्गर द सीसो द इजीयर इट इज फॉर विश्रुत टू पुश मी अप यस या राइट एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली दिस इज द थिंग ओके एंड the torque is if i have a long rope and i have a stone on the end and i like start rotating it very quickly wherever i leave it the stone hits vishrut in the head it will hurt him a lot if the rotation is a lot yeah <laughs> yeah right <laughs> how is this relevant to earth and moon and the rover going on top agar chandrayaan ko directly bhejna chahte hain to hame bahut sara fuel ka zarurat padega और अगर हम इस ये फोर्स सिलिंग सोट का फोर्स यूज करके भेजेंगे तो हमें कम फ्यूल का यूज करना पड़ेगा हम उसको कम रोटेट करते जाएंगे हमें इसका रोटेशन का वेलोसिटी बढ़ता जाएगा बढ़ता जाएगा एंड देन वी एट ए पॉइंट वी विल टर्न टू द मोर 
it will reach to the moon and then again start rotating and slowly slowly we can decrease again using that we can save lots of fuel and we don't need very powerful spacecraft for that i think that's why you've been seeing this stat going around that interstellar ka budget kuch 150 odd million tha and chandrayaan 3's budget is 74 million or something it's about almost half of what was spent on making the movie interstellar yeah exactly russia also launched the moon mission and it failed but they used the technology that is like they can use the good spacecraft that can use very heavy weight but it failed actually we don't know what is the exact problem there but we are successful so we are happy <laughs> So now that we are successful what does it mean we've gotten to the dark side of the moon we have a rover there we won that race now what first of thing to race there it's a very big uh, thing okay when we do science and everything so it's like a small and a small kind of fish stone so relief is small is small so you have to uh, go one step by one step so first thing the land, uh, it landed there so it's a big thing second thing now we can directly take the composite material on the moon surface we can take the measurements of the different kind of composition what kind of minerals are there earlier we have to uh, map those things from the orbit like 100 km orbit 200 km orbit so now directly from the surface we can take those measurements and this rover can now measure the ice water and take the samples and send the signals to us so this this is very useful to us the x ray diffraction is there so what is x ray diffraction x ray light hum kisi surface pe koi composition hai minerals ka to hum us pe agar x ray dalenge to different different angle se usko tilt karenge to different different diffraction pattern banta jayega to hamare paas already har ek uh, मिनरल का डिफरेंट डिफरेंट क्रिस्टल स्ट्रक्चर होता है उसका ऑलरेडी मैपिंग है तो वो डेटा हमारे पास आएगा तो हम एग्जैक्टली बोल सकते हैं कि क्या क्या मिनरल वहाँ पर है मून सरफेस पे तो इससे हम मून का मून का हिस्ट्री हमें पता चलेगा हाउ इट इज मेड एंड व्हाट इज द हिस्ट्री ऑफ मून फॉर्मेशन एंड दिस थिंग्स वी कैन मेजर सो एसेंशली यूजिंग एक्स रेज and the patterns that इमर्ज फ्रॉम दोज एक्स रेज वेन यू पुट दैम ऑन डिफरेंट एंगल्स ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द मून you can sort of map out what are the minerals that lie underneath that surface because of the patterns that come out through the x rays yeah so if we can measure on the surface we can say these are the things there and there are various kind of instruments when the chandrayaan first was there there were 11 instruments i think how many instruments here in the rover there are three instrument and in the lander also there are three instruments and one instrument around the orbit the rover will send signal to the rover and rover will to the orbiter and then it will come to us what's the difference between the rover and the orbiter w- what does that mean okay jab spacecraft jab uh, total instrument ko orbit mein bheja hai then orbit se kuch part ko uh, smooth surface pe bheja one thing always will rotate in uh, orbit around 100 km moon surface se this vikram lander the name is say vikram of the lander it landed on the surface of the moon and the rover will move around uh, 10 or 15 min- meter around that lander so it will send the signal to the satellite moving in the orbit so it will collect the data and it will send to us that data so i think if we all recall there was that very famous dialogue that the eagle has landed the eagle was the lander that was on apollo 11 which was neil armstrong's spacecraft so they had a separate orbiter unit where the third astronaut who was part of their entire the three of them who went to the moon right and two of them were actually in that eagle which actually went to the surface which was neil armstrong and buzz aldrin and there was a third guy who was up in that orbiter so similarly with Chandrayaan 3 we have the orbiter we have the Vikram lander and we have the Pragyan rover which is actually getting out of the lander and going on the surface so i think the way it works is that isro can communicate directly with vikram lander but isro doesn't have direct communication with the pragyan rover the rover communicates with the lander which then communicates with isro so yeah it is uh, those kind of things but uh, 
like things are changing with time and we have new instruments compared to the 1960s so we can take uh, lots of measurement in 1960s uh, there were limited things actually it was a competition between USSR and USA that who goes first to the moon their main mission was to go to the moon it was not about the size how much size is there so main focus was on land on the moon now there are lots uh, like apollo missions and uh, the missions uh, from india japan and uh, ussr there are lots of mission and everyone is doing science according to that i think in 2019 they reported one cave that is going deep uh, about 2 kilometers so they can they can establish the human civilization there once we can find the water and the resources there we can send some humans there and starts mining there firstly it is very sad that vishnu has to mention the guy as the third guy on that mission who were thing like you know he's like neil armstrong buzz aldrin and the third guy who was just up there he has no cause to be secondly let's say we are in an ideal world where now as many humans as we want can get to the moon and they can come back and everything is sorted we have figured out the science what can we get out of it what's the agenda here what does india get out of it what does the world get out of it and where does humanity go from there resources are limited on earth and we are continuously consuming all the minerals we need now something new there are reports in the media and uh, new research research are going on that we can even uh, mine on the meteoroids going around the earth we can uh, uh, mine those things they have gold and other minerals there so like uh, from the moon we can also mine there so like i love there is, there is lots of iron and everything so we can mine and use here one goal is like that wo kehte hai na ki duniya to chode nahi ab chand to bhi ja rahe hai mining karne we are using so we can't blame any single person so everyone using the resources and we need new resources to survive so it's to survive humanity we need to go and higher and higher that's the thing to the third astronaut his name was michael collins apologies to michael collins that we forgot his name i forgot his name i i, I knew his name i just didn't say it earlier you can see it's very it's very easy to say it after huh you couldn't have just been nice and mean like yeah this is this is the the name you missed i think that's a good note to leave us on this was a short quick recording for all of you and india has achieved this incredible incredible thing we'll have a follow up episode if you want to talk about mining asteroids someday so do let us know if you like it and we'll bring you more sir cheers